problem is, is that we have that thought. It creates a feeling and it creates a mood, then creates behaviors, then creates a life. Welcome back to Happiness and Progress. I'm your host, Danielle Craig. I'm an Emmy award-winning journalist, a mom, wife, and you know what I like to say, just a person looking for more joy in the everyday. This podcast is brought to you by the Mail Tribune. You can find more podcasts at mailtribune.com. If you like listening, please click that subscribe button. It helps me when you do that. And I am able to continue doing this podcast, which I love doing. And I love today's conversation. I think you are going to really enjoy what Ryan Hayden has to say. Let me introduce you to Ryan. She is a certified life and spiritual coach and meditation teacher. You may best know her as the in-house life coach at Poosh, which is Kourtney Kardashian's lifestyle website. As a life coach, Ryan assists clients in achieving a happier, healthier, and more balanced life. Today, we talk about feeling triggered, where that comes from, how to connect with our subconscious, and something really neat, self-hypnosis. I know it might sound a little scary, but give it a chance for this conversation. She's going to explain what self-hypnosis is and how it can help you realize your best life. Let's get to it. I want to welcome you to the Happiness and Progress podcast, and thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Two of the things I want to talk about are feeling triggered and self-hypnosis, and this as we come into the new year And I think one of those things can hold you back from the person you want to be, those triggers. And the other thing can help you walk out of that, the self-hypnosis. Is that right? It can be. It's one of many different types of techniques you can use. Um, I think, you know, also this idea of like trying to run out of a trigger, Mm. you know, I have a different concept of that sometimes. I think triggers can point to where we're not free. And if we can be with them and stay with them instead of, you know, we have a culture and also as humans, we like to have favorable feelings versus unfavorable feelings. And we're going to say they're not good or bad. They're just preferable, right? Maybe Mm -hmm. or comfortable or uncomfortable. And so I think triggers, sometimes we can feel like we're out of control. We can feel like we, we, we have a reaction and um, a reaction from my perspective, you know, as a, as a, proponent for the subconscious, it's a reaction from the subconscious mind that um, doesn't actually match up with reality of what might be going on. And that's very confusing as humans, because we're like, I thought, I feel, you know, I don't understand why this is taking place. And maybe the other person you might be have, if it's a person, you might say, why, what, why are you getting so upset? Or what, why is this affecting you this way? It's because your subconscious is engaged. It's not matching reality, that trigger that's happening. And so from the perspective of the subconscious, it's interesting to say, what's going on? Get curious Mm -hmm. instead of trying to pop out of it. It's what's going on for me. And so I have a lot of different ways I work with um, clients and kind of honing in on it and knowing that create space for it. Don't tread water, dive deep into it and let's see what's there. Let's sift through it together. Mm -hmm. And anyone listening, you can do that, you know, when you feel triggered, when you feel that activation or contraction around something, instead of redefining and saying, this isn't okay, I'm out of control, what's going like, instead of that, just breathe, get with it and start speaking to yourself. This is that self talk we look we speak about a lot is ask yourself, what's going on for me? Get curious. Mm -hmm. What's happening? Wow, I'm having a big reaction. What do you think this is about? What does this remind me of? Those are, these are really good questions to just be with it. I love that. And I love this way of looking at triggers because you're right. We're always trying to run from something. And a lot of times it's that subconscious mind that was created when we were children. So, um, actually part of what I wanted to read was something you wrote on Instagram talking about the triggers and being grateful for triggers. Mm -hmm. You wrote, let them give you their gifts to uncover the hurt, the unprocessed events of your past and fear, always fear the chief activator, go slow, be patient and loving with who you are now. The one who no longer requires this unconscious signaling. You're ready for an up level by bringing awareness to your triggered state. When it pops up, it's time. End quote. I loved that. That stopped me. So what's the first step to doing this? How do we, how do we change the way we are looking at our triggers and trying to run away from them? How can we start accepting them as gifts and taking the moment? I think from this moment forward, tell yourself you're not going to abandon yourself anymore. Mm. I'm done with that. I'm done seeking outside of myself in externals. I'm done asking other people to do things for me, which I'm unwilling to do for myself. 
I'm unwilling to project on other people. I'm going to take absolute responsibility. So that would be a good place to start. That's a big, that's a big um, line in the sand, first of all. So you, maybe you might be inching your way towards that, but it's, I guess, saying I'm going to create a new relationship with me from this moment forward. And that is that I'm going to keep checking in with myself. So a lot of times triggers will happen out of left field because someone is so not, they're unconscious. We have upwards of the high end of 80,000 thoughts a day, most of which mm -hmm. are unconscious. So then something happens and we're like, oh, I'm having a feeling, oh my God, what's going on? You know what I mean? So throughout your day, you know, I often recommend this, set a timer on your phone, check in with yourself, what's going on? Stop, breathe, get conscious. So creating space and awareness so that when a trigger comes, because it will, right? This is what we're trying, that subconscious is not our enemy, just like people think the ego is the enemy. It's not, it helps us not be a blob of consciousness. We need the ego, but it's just, we mistakenly give the ego so much unchecked room to run point in our life. So it's the same with the subconscious. If we start noticing, oh, wow, there's a thought that I have often, there's never enough. I'm gonna be left. Um, everybody else gets things I don't get. Like those sort of, Often those, that's how you can trace, that's how you know it's an unconscious phrase or belief that you have that's literally operating everything underneath that iceberg. Mm. And so when you start to get, we're creating this container of awareness and you start to notice these thoughts, right? You're checking it. Oh, wow. Then you start to have that detachment from like, wow, these are coming up. It's not me thinking that this is a thought that's sort of just like a, a database that gets opened up and, and, and a thought like that gets downloaded, mm -hmm. you know? And so noticing it, the problem is, is that we have that thought, it creates a feeling and it creates a mood, then creates behaviors, then creates a life, mm -hmm. personality yeah. and a life, mm -hmm. you know? So I think you catch it at that point where you start to bring that awareness to it. What are these habitual thoughts I have? And many times, you know, you can just sit down and probably write them out and get a good long list going of what you believe that's, and what you've thought has, is true you know, and start there. So that's, that's a really great, great place to go and a great place to begin with things. So you're creating that curiosity, you're creating that allowing that awareness around those triggers, and you're giving them permission to be instead of feeling like I have to be in control all the time, which is what most people think, especially mm -hmm. if you have a lot of triggers, it's mm -hmm. actually the opposite, you know, mm -hmm. um, is to, to just, this is totally normal. It's totally, absolutely what should be happening because the subconscious is trying to move you into alignment with yourself. And that's so powerful. It's not the enemy, like I was saying before, right. about the, not the enemy that we're like trying to do battle with or like when people sit for meditation, they think the mind is the enemy and they're like trying to wield it and bend it. And it doesn't work that way. We allow it. The mind off gases. That's what it mm -hmm. does. Give it permission. Just do its thing. And then you do what you're doing in your meditation, which is, you know, for some people it would be breath awareness or it would be mantra repetition or it would be following a, um, a visual, you know, a, a, an audio pro. Mm -hmm. uh, program. So it's, I think it's just, it's moving into friendship with these parts and pieces of ourselves, the subconscious being one of them, where we say, you know, it's here for me to help me move into this place where I'm in a cent my center within myself. And we all want that, whether we think we do or we don't, we do. Because mm -hmm. from that place, then we create the relationships that are fulfilling. Then we find our purpose. Then we know contentment instead of seeking fleeting, you know, happiness. Mm -hmm. I think the reason that we run from these triggers and these feelings and feeling that out of control is because we don't, we don't want to feel that way anymore. How mm -hmm. does taking that time and writing those things out and moving some of that subconscious stuff into the conscious, how does that help us move out of it, move forward? Does it? Well, I think awareness is just always going to be key. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, this isn't, there's no quick fix. It's like people come to me for hypnosis. Sometimes actually it, it, does. it is quick, but, but most times it's this work. This is the good work that people don't necessarily want to do, you know? And so they'll seek it in, you know, Netflixing and relationships or a bottle or whatever, all those other things, because it feels so unmanageable, but it really just starts with you creating with that awareness and saying, and moving into acceptance. It is what it is. And it's here for me. And so it creates this yummy dialogue with you 
And that seems foreign to a lot of people that people come and say, I want to be, I want to have this great love relationship. Well, great. But what is your relationship to you? Mm. What, how do you speak to yourself? What are you marinating in? What's that inner climate? Because I guarantee you, that's what you're going to pull in in partnership. That mm -hmm. same, you know, mirror is going to be held up. So have that, uh, that idea that, okay, if I want all these other things that I know are out there, let me start with me and just see if I bring this awareness to this subconscious beliefs and ideas that putting that lens on it, then you can start sifting through it. Hey, that's not true. That is not actually what I want to believe going forward. So you're starting to put a little wedge and a little breathing space between what you thought was reality for yourself. I think that's mm -hmm. the shift. Mm -hmm. If someone, you know, goes through life as many of us have, where they're doing that, I'm just going to get away from this as fast as I can. I'm just going to get away from it. I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to pretend it's not happening. Can you tell me about the disconnect in the reality that they hope occurs and that, and the goals that they're trying to accomplish and, and how the subconscious, if it's not addressed, can keep creeping in and holding people back? Well, I think it, that's where we see people have this conscious ideas like I want love and I want success and I want abundance and they're doing all the action steps around it. And somehow they keep getting the same results over and over mm -hmm. and it's not coming to pass. That would be a great indicator that the subconscious is not of that same in that same belief pattern. And let's unpack the subconscious. It's what you touched on from the ages of zero to seven. We are in that theta state, which makes absolute sense. You land in a body on earth and you're categorizing and quantifying the world that you live in. And that's for your safety. You know, at that time it's for survival mode. So you're figuring out what's security look like? What does love look like? So basically it's from that, that precog time of zero to seven. And then that gets filed away into the subconscious. And then we pop out of that usually at, at around seven, eight years old. And then we're in this alpha beta state all the time. Like we're in now, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't actually upload as much as often as, as um, intensely, if you will, you know? So that's why we want to go back into that time into the, the not back, back in that time, we want to go into the subconscious and renegotiate all those ideas again from that place. So to line you up with what you do actually believe around abundance, around security, around love, around the world that you live in, that makes sense for you now as an adult. Mm -hmm. I love this because it's so empowering. You don't have to be a victim to those thoughts that were created in those early stages in zero to seven years old. We were so young then and had zero control of what was going on around us. Right. Tell me about yeah. your personal experience. You're moving through life and you realize how the subconscious is holding you back and you've got to do this hard work. Tell, <laughs> tell us about your personal experience. I've always been fascinated with the subconscious mind. There's a book that I that fell into my lap through a friend called The Power of the Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. And it's very old school, but it really was very, very powerful for me at the time. And I, I ended up getting a, a love for it. And I went and sought out, I started dating after my divorce and I kept pulling in the same patterning with that same human. And I couldn't understand why I was pulling in these type, same type of person over and over. And I kept saying, I want love. I want this. I want that. And then I was pulling in someone who wasn't available in a sense, you know, and I was like, what is this? And so I went and saw a hypnotherapist and I felt different. I felt a shift happened and it was very subtle for me. I started, I felt like I had almost like something a buoyancy underneath me where things that would have normally bothered me. I cared less about, I cared less whether they texted back. I cared less whether they call it was it was a sense of well-being mm. that I had, you know, um, and it wasn't like all of a sudden I didn't like them anymore. It wasn't like that, but I started noticing my attitude and my perspective around things were shifting. And that's what hypnosis did for me. So when I became a life coach, I knew with coaching, I could only get at so much with my clients. So I quickly became, you know, um, a clinical hypnotherapist so that those discoveries that we would make in coaching, we could then cement it with the subconscious. And so mm -hmm. that, that it works really well together, those mm -hmm. two modalities. I love how you describe that because that's how that sense of buoyancy, that's how I felt after I discovered meditation in my thirties, <laughs> finally yeah. Yeah. stopping for a minute. And it was absolutely incredible. So I love how you describe that. So tell me, let's move into 
hypnosis, self-hypnosis, because I think this is a really scary <laughs> thought for a lot of people, you know, like meditation was a really sc- th- scary thought for a lot of people, maybe a decade ago. So tell me what is self-hypnosis? It's not scary. Walk, walk me and the listeners through it. Well, first off, you go into hypnosis more than you know. It's a natural state. Mm. So you're, it's happening whether you like it or not. You're watching TV. <laughs> you're in trance. You're in a form of trance. When you drive from A to B, you go into trance. It, that's another word. It's the same thing. And self-hypnosis is, I mean, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. So just so you know, mm. it's to the degree that you allow yourself to drop into that state within your own self, that theta state that we talked about. Mm-hmm. So I can't make anyone do anything. I mean, I know stage shows have their whole agenda that they do. I don't know how to do that. And that's not my niche, you know, mm-hmm. but, but that I is, do, that is technically self-hypnosis. No, that's, that would be oh, hypnosis. Totally different. All hypnosis okay. is self-hypnosis. So okay. Okay. let's just keep both that under that category. But, um, there, those people that go up on stage, they have a willingness. There's a part of them that wants to do those things. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't be doing it. It's not against their will. It's not, they couldn't be, they couldn't be asked to rob a bank if that went against their moral code. Do you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? In hypnosis. Yeah. So that's always good to know. So when you work with a hypnotherapist, or we're going to talk about self-hypnosis, you are dropping into the state to the degree that you allow yourself to drop into that. Mm-hmm. It's like a guided meditation mm-hmm. in a sense. I mean, it's deeper than that, but it, you, it's to the degree that you, you're, you're following along with how this is unfolding, right? Mm-hmm. The degree that you drop into that state of meditation, which mm-hmm. is an alpha theta state. Mm-hmm. So that's just something to know and something to note. I can't make you go there. You know, it's not right. like you are feeling very sleepy. Like those are all <laughs> these things that we've seen. My you kids are big Captain out. Underpants fans. Yes, so it's exactly. not like you're going to, you're yeah, going to just no. totally alter ego. No, no, no. no. Okay. It's, so it's there, I like that too, because there's some more responsibility with that. You're not going to oh. be a victim of anything. No. Okay. I love that. Yes. I love that you're calling out these, these terms because it's absolutely true. And so in self-hypnosis, you, you learn how to drop yourself into that state, mm. which is so delightful and delicious. And there's many, many ways people have, they're all over the internet. You can find different techniques on how to do that. But basically you're doing some breathing, you're counting down. I mean, the one that I usually use is you take certain breaths, you focus on certain parts of your body, you're relaxing the physical body. You're giving the mind something to do. You're counting down from 10 to one using breath to do it. Then you're visualizing the outcome the outcome state that you're desiring. So this is like manifesting it to the nth degree that, you know, mm-hmm. and then there's all these parts where you're seeing it, you're feeling it, you're tasting it, you're experiencing it. Then you're trusting that it is so. And then you may be repeat a phrase um, that cements that for you. So it's so cool. This um, pharmacist in France, I think in the turn of the century and Mil had this phrase, he would give, um, people a prescription and over the counter, he would say, repeat this and say, as you take every pill, say every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. Mm. So that is one of the strongest, you know, auto suggestions of hypnosis that you can say. So for anyone listening, if you don't just try it, just keep don't even when you take pills, say it when you wake up in the morning, say it when you go to sleep at night, those are the times that the subconscious is the most impressionable. You know why? Because you're dropping down into Delta sleep and to get to Delta, you've got to go through Theta. Mm, mm-hmm. So that would be the time that you would repeat a, a phrase like that every day in every way. I am getting better and better. I love that. And when you wake up in the morning and when you go to sleep, or I am manifesting the life of my dreams, or I am fully, deeply entrenched in my love for myself, or I am calling in a relationship with someone special, or like all those, those you find your phrase, and then those would be, that would be the time to say it as you're drifting off to sleep and waking up. But so Emil Kuwait did this and he found that the people who repeated that phrase while taking the medication went off the medication faster than the people who did not repeat the phrase. Wow. Wow. So this kind of sounds like an affirmation, but it is much deeper than an affirmation because you. Yeah. They don't work affirmations. Yeah. Yeah. I know you, I know you're not a a fan of affirmations from (laughs) from what I've read. So does this have. Is it, you, you can't skip that beginning part where you do the breaths and you count zero to 10 and then you do the visualization of you doing the thing that you want to see you doing. You can't skip that part. You can skip it. It's just about what, what happens is people brush their teeth when they're doing affirmations and their brain's still going and it's not sinking in. 
you know, and the subconscious is like, no, don't not buying it, you know, but when you drop into that state, so you're in a relaxed state, you don't have to do the visualization. You don't have to do that. You could just bring yourself. Even How about if you meditate, if you're a meditator and you meditate and you feel like you've dropped past the mind, most likely you're in an alpha theta state. Mm. Okay. So you can do it then that would be the time when you're coming out of meditation to repeat your affirmations. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, yes. Yeah. And I love that you talked about doing it while brushing your teeth. Cause that's still running because you're just still going and you're just like, I am, I am whatever I am and I'm brushing my teeth and I'm going to get ready and I'm going so fast and I haven't stopped and I haven't dropped down into a different state. No. Okay. That is. And then people, then people get mad because they're like, I'm doing everything and it's not <laughs> working, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it's just like, do it, but do it smartly. Mm-hmm. Do it with this new information and then see how it takes root and then see what happens. And then here's another little trick with the um, subconscious. Sometimes we don't believe things, but you can say, I like the idea. Mm. The subconscious likes the idea. Oh yeah. I like the idea that I'm abundant. Mm, Cause if like you say, that. you know, so you can just add that in. It's another little cheat piece. <laughs> Give me all the tricks today. You just add Love in it. that. I like the idea that I'm stepping into my abundance. Mm-hmm. How you can know? this, how can this go with the things that we feel triggered about? Do mm-hmm. we create a, do we manifest that the opposite of the things that are triggering us? Hmm, I don't know. I think you just, you stay with the triggers and then you do this work over here. Okay. I think that you're not, it's, you don't, you wouldn't like do it's not a fight for a trigger. No, I think the triggers are just what they are. We're just allowing them. We're getting curious about them. We're watching them. We're seeing what those, what, how they could overlap is where you're seeing those phrases that you've come up with. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you create their counterpart. Mm-hmm. I am enough. Mm-hmm. I am loving. I am abundant. And then use those when you do the self-hypnosis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell me about when people come to you and they go through this self-hypnosis and they start bringing this into their life as a daily practice, what is the change that you see? Everything changes. Mm. You know, everything changes because they feel, first of all, they feel empowered. Like you're talking about like, Oh my God, I am my own solution. Mm. You know, for everyone else on the path. I love that. I love it. I am my own solution. Let's just say Everyone that. else on the bed, we're always seeking, we're seeking, we're seeking. Oh, it's that course, it's that book, it's this hypnotherapist, it's that they're going to solve that. We give away so much power. That's not to say that we, there aren't mentors that show up for us. That's not to say that a coach can't show up and like be a guide throughout the thing or a therapist who has to unpack some deep trauma in childhood. Like these are so valuable things, but there will come a point in everyone's journey where the solution is stop seeking. Mm-hmm. You know, really just anchor into you and do that work that's happening, you know, within your own self and be with it and stay with it. And like we said before, don't abandon yourself. And, um, and that sounds like you're self-obsessed. I'm not, and it was always going to be some listener who's like, that sounds really self-obsessive. Um, it's, it's not, it's, it's so self-loving and in turn, you will find your whole community, your children, your partner, your family, um, your business, everything thrives when that relationship is in, in its proper place. So mm-hmm. depending on varying degrees, I feel like drama drops away in people's lives pretty quickly because you, be, you become less of a heat seat. You're up-leveling your energetic blueprint, right? So drama just doesn't have a toehold anymore. It's just not resonant because you're not seeking that those outside stimuluses as much. Plus, you're just not engaging with people at that level anymore. It's not interesting. Mm-hmm. You need that jump start. You need to plug in the thing for, for that you know, (laughs) the pilot to get lit. You don't need that. That's happening on the inside. You're doing that for yourself. You're feeling this expansion. You're feeling this connectivity that you've been seeking everywhere else. So um, those are things that change. And then you have then people then, you know, either leave relationships that were fraught or they find their soulmates or, I mean, there's tons of soulmates. There doesn't have to be, and I have to always say that because I truly love to expand this idea about a soulmate. It doesn't have to be a romantic partner. Mm -hmm. We talked about our children. We have four children, my children, you know, I feel that connection to them. So it's, it's, and my mom, you know, that I'm super close with, like, we're definitely traveling the same soul pool. Mm -hmm. Um, 
maybe I've gone too far in the spiritual realm for this. No, one. I love it. I, I, uh, <laughs> I buy into that so much. I mean, there are, there are friends who have walked into my life who I feel mm-hmm. are soulmates yeah, that we, that we are connected on a deeper level than just in these human bodies walking around this earth. Um, oh my God. Plus it takes the pressure off of the romantic relationship. Yeah. by God, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you put so much pressure on our partner. You complete me. It's like that time is over. Mm-hmm. You know, we complete ourselves and then we get to show up in relationship and from overflow, hopefully. I mean, we're going to trigger each other. That's going to happen. But again, if we're bringing this awareness to um, our own self within that relationship and to our triggers, we're not going to be projecting that onto them and saying, why are you doing this again? Why does it, why, you know, we're not looking to them to, um, to think the solution is going to be in fixing how they're relating to you. It's how you're responding to that trigger Mm -hmm. that's really going to set you free. And that's just, I think, more of how this is not selfish work. When you do this work, it impacts every part of your life and with your children and with the people you, you meet on the street and the person who cuts you off in the road. I just, I think you, you bring such a different energy. Like you said, I mean, it's just incredible. This work, not, not selfish at all. Um, I want to ask what this looks like in a regular routine in someone's life. If they're like listening and they're like, okay, I need that. I'm on board. Get me, get me going with self-hypnosis. What does that look like for them? I would say just find, go online and find a, um, a technique that works for you. You know, there's lots of people out there that will, you can either get, find something, you know, that will walk you through it, maybe on YouTube, or maybe there's an app or maybe something like that. I think, I know I have a hypnosis recording on my website, so that's ryanhaddon.com. So pop over there. That's free and just see, see how that feels to you. See if you like it. See if you like that feeling. Mm-hmm. you know, of dropping past the mind, see what that feels like, and maybe listen to it a couple of times. And there's so many great people out there trying to bring hypnosis mainstream. And um, it's not easy to do because it does feel people have a lot of preconceived notions and control issues. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's podcasts like this, where we start opening this up and making it it's just as mainstream as meditation. It's similar. It's another, mm-hmm. it's another modality and it's just as calming just as effective can really benefit. Like you said, it it changes your life. It creates that buoyancy, Mm -hmm. that that, um, flexibility. Yeah. I think maybe just the connotation of the word hypnosis, Mm -hmm. it just has a bad rap, I think. And think people, because this is, I mean, I like, I already do a lot of this, you know, maybe not in a row, but I do the meditation. I do the manifesting Mm -hmm. and I I do affirmations, not while brushing my teeth. (laughs) Yeah, but try I, them from that place. Yeah. And yeah see what I, I think bringing yeah. these all together and it doesn't sound scary. Like the word mm-hmm. hypnosis has meant mm-hmm. to me in the past. So I am so, so excited to learn about this new technique to bring into my life personally. Mm-hmm. Um, the last thing I want to ask you, I ask all of my guests, um, this podcast is called happiness and progress, trying to find mm-hmm. that more joy throughout life. What is your number one tip to doing that? Finding the more joy in the good, the bad, and the in-between of life. Well, gratitude is a quick shortcut mm-hmm. to get you there. You know, I mean, there's, that's really the thing I, I really suggest also is keeping a gratitude journal. And I know it sounds boring, but it's really powerful because come up with 10 things every day. You're going to experience resistance. Just commit to it for a period of time. Maybe it's 90 days, maybe it's 30 days. Have a little journal next to your bed right before you sleep and write down 10 things and be it, have it be different than every other day, than every, than the day before. Mm-hmm. And then what happens is during your, your life, you start noticing moments in real time when you get a, go get a cup of coffee and it's hot or the person gives you a great smile or they hold the door and you say, that's going to make the list. And what happens is then during your day, it creates a different frequency of how you're looking for good in your life. And that does magnify when the more you magnify the good, the more you're going to be experiencing the good. And that will create a feeling of contentment and happiness. Mm, I love That's that. You talked earlier about how all those triggers can do this and do that and do this and then create the life. I think that that's what gratitude can do. Gratitude moves us into feeling better and being grateful and finding those moments and ultimately creating the life, creating the life that we, we want to be in. Ryan, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I have absolutely loved talking to you today. Me too. It's been a pleasure being here. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Ryan. I just loved hearing what she had to say. So much wisdom she brought to this podcast. You can find all of her information in show notes. 
You can also find some of her resources on getting started with self-hypnosis. I put that in show notes for you as well. I want to thank you for being here on Happiness and Progress. Mm-hmm.